Hello, this is Jem from ElevateCode.com, and in this tutorial we'll be covering the basics of printing. We'll be using Visual Basic 2010 Express, and I'm assuming you know the basics of VB.net. As we go along, I encourage you to pause the video and type the code with me, and just play with the code so that you fully understand it. So let's begin. We'll start with a new Windows Forms application project, and we'll just call it Printing. Rename Form 1 to Form Printing. Change the text property to printing example on our form so it has a caption. Now we'll add a tool strip to the form. The first item on the tool strip will be a label. We'll change the text on it to open file and rename it to tool strip open file or TS open file for short. We'll add another label to the tool strip and change the text to print. We'll rename it to tool strip print or TS print for short. Now we'll add a text box and rename it to text file. We'll make it multi-line and set the doc to fill. I'm going to just make the font larger so that we can see it a little better. We're going to create click events for both of these labels on the tool strip. Now we need to add a print document, print preview dialog, and print dialog to the form. You can just drop it in the gray area beneath the design area. This area is called the component tray. Now I'm going to shorten the names of all of these controls just to make it a little easier to work with. Next, we'll go to the events of the print doc control and create events for the begin print, end print, query page, and print page events. You can just double click on these from the events window. Next, we can add a message box to each of these events so that we can easily tell exactly when and what order these are being fired in when we run the program. Now we will import system.drawing.printing. Next, we'll handle what happens when we click on Open File. I'll dim a reader object as a new system.io.streamreader and tell it to work with the file billofrights.txt. We'll set the text in our text box equal to everything in that text document and set textfile.txt equal to the object reader read to end. We then close the object reader control. Now, the Bill of Rights document can be placed directly into the debug folder of the project so that we don't have to bother putting in a file path. This is great for testing or just learning concepts as it can save you time. Now we'll set print dialog.printer settings equal to the print doc.printer settings. This is actually something only necessary for Windows XP. Windows Vista and Windows 7 don't need this line of code to work. Check for when they press OK on the print dialog using an if statement. Once OK has been pressed, we'll set the print doc printer settings equal to whatever the print dialog settings the users choose. Now normally we would have another dialog for the user to select how they would like their page to be formatted, but I'm just going to set some default page settings, set all the margins to 50, and landscape to false so that we can work with this and test it more quickly for the tutorial. And then the print doc's default settings are set to this page setup page settings that we just created. Then we're going to have a print preview dialog show up, but we need to set the document to be previewed as print doc first. Let's run the program. You can see what order our events fire in, and we now have a blank page. Let's stop the program. Now for this part of the tutorial, we're only going to use the begin print and print page events. And we'll just remove the message boxes now that we know what order the events are in. We'll go to the Prints page event and declare a few variables. We're going to dim font text as a font and set it equal to whatever font happens to be in the text box. Dim text height as an integer. Now we're going to have a few variables that are simply to save on typing and make things easier to read. Left margin and right margin can be shortened this way. Set text height equal to the height of the entire paper minus the top and bottom margins. Now we'll dim lines per page as an integer. This is a calculation to figure out how many lines we can fit on the page using the current font. We'll make this into an integer using cint and use the math.round function to get a whole number from text height, which is the whole page minus the margins, divided by the height of the text plus a buffer. The buffer should ideally be calculated as well, but for this simple tutorial we're just going to hard code it as .025. Now we'll draw a red rectangle around our page just to show that we can check nothing is being printed outside of the margins using the draw rectangle function. Fixing an error here, I meant to put in the top margin. Okay, so now we'll make a static variable int start as integer. A static variable is somewhat like a form level variable in that it will stay the same even though we're recursively calling this function. A recursive function 
is simply a function that is being called over and over again until a certain condition is met or is no longer being met. M int line number as an integer. For int counter int start to 100, we're going to draw the string line number and find out what the line number is. Use whatever font the text box is using. Use black as the color. Left margin as the starting point. We'll put it at the height of the text times the current line number plus the top margin, which is basically underneath any of the previous lines. And each time we will increment the line number by one. Once the line number is greater than the amount of lines you can have per page, then set int start equal to int counter. Remember, this is static so it will stay the same. We're going to set e has more pages to true and then exit the for loop. Has more pages is a recursive function which means it will call this whole sub again. Now when we run the program, you can see how it lists the line 0 to 52, and then on the next page you can see it running from 0 to 48. If you'd like at this point, you can use F8 on your keyboard to step through the program and better understand how this section works. Now that you understand that part, we're going to change this for loop to go from int start to the number of lines in the text file instead of just the default 100 we had hard coded. And we're going to change it so that it's based off of the text in the file as well, changing this to textfile.lines and counter. When you run the program, if you stretch the window, you can see that these lines are all really long lines. This is because text boxes only count hard returns as new lines. So if you print this, you can see how these are running off of the page and you lose all of that information. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll work on making sure the printing stays within the margins so that it doesn't run off of the page. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below the video.